So you wanna head off, travel, score amazing waves, but you've got no one to go with. If this is your current situation, then you'll be pleased to know traveling alone can be one of the most amazing and like rewarding experiences in the world. Not only do you have to not compromise with like a group on deciding where to surf, what to do, where to go, you know, you can wake up and do exactly what you want all the time. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down some of the very best places to score waves and meet people as you're doing it. First up is everyone's favorite surf town, Changu, Bali. Now I mentioned Changu a hell of a lot in my videos, just because I think it has a bit of everything. You know, it's got a good digital nomad infrastructure. It's a bit of a party town, if that's your thing. There's really fun waves for all different abilities and for the standard of living you can have in Changu, the cost of living is super low. So it's just a wicked place. There's loads of hostels, surf camps, bars, places that you're gonna meet other people who are doing exactly the same things as you. So if you're thinking of somewhere to go to get fun waves and you're by yourself, there's so many different hostels in Changu, all costing, you know, some are less than $10 per night. You know, you can stay in a really nice hostel for between 10 and $20, and you can even get your own room for around the same price. So staying in these hostels is just gonna put you around other people that are going there to get waves and work online and do all this cool stuff. When I book surf hostels, I always use hostelworld or booking.com. You can head to Changu, you've got Old Man's, you've got Echo Beach, heaps of fun waves, and you're gonna be around people that wanna surf them as well. Next up, we've got Santa Teresa in Costa Rica. Now, Santa Teresa is a really popular beach town in the northwest of Costa Rica. There's white sand beaches, jungle out the back with waterfalls and wicked hiking you can do. And in town, there's so many different surf hostels and surf camps that it's ridiculous. You really are spoiled for choice. Um, check out Selena, Santa Teresa, Aki Pods Hostel. There's so many places you can stay and meet other people that it's very popular with digital nomads. It's very popular with backpackers and surfers. You've got fun waves out the front. You've got beginner friendly waves on the inside. It's, it's really sick. So I just want to interrupt this video to let you know about a really cool brand I've started working with called Ho Stevie. Now Ho Stevie makes some really cool surf products at basically a fraction of the price of what you pay for some of the other top surf brands. I've tried out a few of their products recently and it's been really cool. It's been really cool to work with a brand who, you know, is looking to make good but affordable surf stuff to help people like me and you just go surfing. I've been trying out their five mil wetsuit here at home. I've had some really fun waves here at home. So the five mil has been keeping me nice and toasty and I'm about to go traveling for the rest of the year and put all of the other stuff through its paces. So keep an eye out for that. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can check it out. But for now, let's crack on with the video. Next up, we've got Bocas del Toro in Caribbean Panama. Bocas del Toro is like a collection of islands off the Caribbean coast of Panama. While the waves are a little bit fickle, you can score amazing waves there if you head there in the right season. But aside from that, it's a really popular backpacker town, so there's loads of cool hostels, especially in town. There's a healthy party scene if you wanna rip into some nightlife. You've got sick restaurants, co-working spaces, all of that good stuff that's gonna put you around uh, great people. Check out Selena, Scully's house. Spanish by the sea, there's some really cheap hostels in town as well as some slightly more upmarket ones. I'll leave links in the description as to where you can check out some of the best ones. Next up, we've got Puerto Escondido in Mexico. It's really famous for having like the really heavy, big wave beachy, but on a normal day, the wave is really fun. You can get like four to six foot like A-frame barrels. There's also a left point at the other end of the beach, a few different reefs and beaches in the area. You're in Southern Mexico, so there's loads of other waves you can check out within a few hours. Again, like everywhere on this list, it's like a thriving digital nomad, backpacker, party, surf town. There's a lot going on in town in terms of nightlife. There's great food. There's loads of hostels. The cheapest ones are situated in Centro. Otherwise, one of my personal favorites is a place called Casa Daiquiri. They've got dorms and privates, pool, kitchen, you're close to Playa Zicatella, you're close to restaurants and shops, you've just got everything you need. And best of all, it only costs $11 per night. 
In Puerto, whatever hostel you stay at, you're gonna meet heaps of people from all over the world, whether it be people going there to work online, get sick waves, or just rip into the nightlife, you're gonna have a bit of everything. Last on our list is Ericeira in Portugal. Now, Ericeira is regarded as one of the world's best surf towns. I haven't spent heaps of time in Ericeira. I only spent around a week there, but loved it. There's so many different ways for all abilities. It's where Cocious is. It's where Riviera de Lash is. And in town, there's loads of co-working spaces if you're a digital nomad. Some pretty affordable hostels as well. The cost of living in Portugal is a lot lower than elsewhere in Europe. And in all these hostels, you're gonna meet people who are, you know, posting up in one of the most rapidly growing surf towns and getting waves, working online and just, just hanging out. I think it's just a great place to sort of tap into that, that kind of vibe. So with those five places, I'm. So in my opinion, they are five of the best solo surf travel destinations. There's so many others as well that I haven't mentioned in this video. So if you know of any really good ones where you've headed to somewhere and you've just been surrounded by other travelers, the locals are really friendly and you've just got that kind of really good, like welcoming sort of vibe, let me know down in the comments. I've traveled like all over the world as a solo traveler. I found these places to be really good but also there's some places that are not so good as a solo traveler. I've found actually New Zealand is, the people are super friendly in New Zealand, but it's really hard to sort of get in with the local crew. Even if you're spending a lot of time in one place, it's re you feel like you're on the outside kind of looking in. You're like around, but you're not really part of it. And this is tricky as well, because as a traveler, you know, you're often going to places for a short time and if you're not planning to live there, then obviously you're not really going to fit fully into the community. Whereas the places I've mentioned today, they kind of have that sort of community of expats and digital nomads who do move around a bit. And they have that mix of people who are there long term and short term. The people who are there long term uh, can introduce you to people who, to locals and people who are there short term are probably doing the same thing as you. So yeah, you're just more likely to meet those sort of people. I found it was tricky being a solo traveler in New Zealand, uh, South Africa was pretty tricky, California as well. I've never been around so many people but felt so isolated. Like everyone just seen in California just seemed so busy and like wouldn't even give you the time of day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you have. Any questions or any wicked solo travel destinations, please let me know in the comments. For now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.